So last week I made about $76,000 from day trading and in this video, I wanna break that down, right? Uh, I wanna break down, uh, you know, my trading week, uh, break down of all my days and trades, what I did well, what I need to work on, and basically my plan for the upcoming week, right? Uh, with that being said, let's dive into it. So last week I took about seven trades, had about an 85% win rate, uh, netted 76,000 and I'll talk a little bit more about that and focus on what's more important. Uh, I traded four out of the five days, as you guys can see what five days I traded. And overall, what I ultimately care about as a trader and what I think everyone here should focus on is R multiple. What was your R for the week, right? I understand I have to post the $76,000 because people get more interested in that, but let's go into the R for the week. What R did I make? And if you don't know what an R is, I will break that down in another video. But for the week, I made about a 14.9 R. Now, ultimately for people that fully don't understand what this means is I made about 15 times my risk amount. Now, what this helps us evaluate, it helps us take out the profit number. It helps us take out you made 70,000, you made 7,000, you made 700, or you made 700,000. Obviously, with more capital at risk, with more money invested, that 70,000 would be more. With less money at risk, less capital invested, that would be less than 70,000. So I don't want to kind of focus on that 70,000 or $76,000 number. So it was a 14.9 or a week, meaning I made 14.9 or about 15 times what I risked. So if I risk 3,000, right? I made about 14 times what I risked for that following week, which is a good way to assess your performance because it takes away size. It takes away, you know, inconsistency of how much you're putting in, how much you're, when you're selling and things like that. Right now, let's go through the overall week. Right. So started the week off. Well, let's go to my daily stats and break it down there. And then we'll go into each trade individually. Right. And for people that are new here, uh, you know, I post, if you guys go on my Twitter, I'll post all of my profits, my breakdowns on Twitter, uh, TOS screenshots, pictures, all that stuff. And I also do live logins for people that are new here. Uh, last year I made about 7 million plus from day trading, uh, did a live login, right? So you can go check that out if you know, you're new here and unfam unfamiliar with, uh, with myself, right? All right, let's go into it. So Monday started the week off, uh, took two trades, made 12,000. 2.3 or one trade, three or the second trade. And I'm going to go through each trade individually and the days as well and just kind of give you guys a little bit context, right? Uh, the next day, Wednesday, uh, took three trades, made about 2R, 2R, lost about 2R, and you guys can see how that day went. This is the day I'm not happy with, and I'll talk about why. And this was also FOMC day. Uh, I kind of broke this day down and what happened, right? But I did end up making 40K on this day, but still not a great day. And I have to be honest with myself about that as a trader, right? Uh, then Thursday came, took one trade, one and done 14% on the trade 2.5 R. And then Friday took about one trade as well. Amazon had a good setup on the downside. Very, very, very lucrative and great trade made about a five R trade, which really, really, you know, did well for myself. All right. So let's go in the mindset of, you know, my trades, my week and things like that. So typically when I start off the week, uh, I'm kind of more in the mindset of being a little bit more risk off and a little bit cautious depending on last week's action. So today's Monday, September 26th, and today I, I've taken no trades. And ultimately I've taken no trades today because the setups in the market, I just wasn't comfortable with. I wasn't comfortable with what the market was doing. Even though there was maybe a good shorting opportunity here, I just was not comfortable. And the reason I bring up the idea of being comfortable, because if we go to September 12th, I didn't take a trade there. September 16th, I didn't take a trade. September 20th, I didn't take a trade. And that's very important to note because you as a trader need to understand that you don't have to trade every day. You shouldn't trade every day. You should only tra trade A when there's opportunities presented based on your trading style and your setups and B when you feel comfortable. Now, if you don't feel those two things, like just like I didn't today, uh, you need to be okay with playing defense, protecting your capital, uh, protecting your financial and mental capital, right? Take it from, from both aspects, right? So very, very important to understand that. Once again, no trades today, and I'm okay with that. Going into la last Monday, 
Last Monday, I did see some good trades and I took advantage of them. Let's go through the trades. Let's understand the risk parameter. So the two trades I took, the first trade was SPY, second trade was also SPY. So when we go into these trades and we understand kind of the logic behind them and the understanding behind them, right? What was my setup? I had an opening drive play. So right into Monday, we had a strong open on SPY, some consolidation, right when the consolidation happened, I took a position in SPY calls, got the opening drive on this consol consolidation, and then slowly started scaling out on the move towards the upside. That was the first play. On this tra trade, I risked about 5,000, made close to 12 grand, so about a 2.3 R trade, uh, pretty solid, right? I go into the next trade after having a strong start, I'm a little bit more comfortable into the day. I'm a little bit more comfortable into what's happening. So it's allowing me to kind of take, I guess, another trade or take on another position. Now, this trade was not the best, and that's another thing I want to share. So on this trade, I took uh, I, I, I took a, a trade for puts, right? I shorted the market right here, and I got out way too early. So if you look at this trade, a few things I want to note, and this is something I didn't do well, uh, but also I didn't get filled where it, I don't want to say I didn't get filled. I just messed up on the contract execution. I got 30 contracts on this, I believe. Uh, was it 30? Yeah, I got 30 contracts. I thought I was getting 300, but my order execution on Thinkorswim or my trading platform was not at 300. And I just didn't pay attention, right? So what I didn't like about this, right? And once again, the pros and cons is my risk went from $4,900 a trade to 2100 where this would have been a twenty, uh, two hundred and ten dollars. It would have been a twenty one hundred dollar risk, right? Where it could have ended way better for me. But ultimately, because I did not, you know, adjust my risk accordingly, or take the trade accordingly, it messed up my risk for the day. Even though the trade went well, the number was great, percentage was great, our multiple was great. My risk on this was bad because I didn't get my full three hundred contracts. And I want to talk about that a li little bit, right? So when you guys are going through your trade recaps for the week, the day, you want to make sure your risk is consistent. So when I look at this, right, a lot of things I did bad this week, right? One, this was terrible, in my opinion. The, this day was just terrible, and I'll talk about this day in a bit. And I, like I said, I did a whole video on it if you guys haven't seen, but this was terrible. The reason these things are terrible is because if I take this trade and I do well, I do well, I do well, there could be that one trade that ultimately destroys your whole trading week. And that's that's where I put that's the risk I put myself into that particular day. Right? And and that's these are things that we don't want to do. So that's one thing I didn't do well. I traded a day where I shouldn't have traded. I put no setup cuz once again I'm going to be super transparent about that. I don't like trading FOMC. I try to catch moves, worked out, but overall too much risk was put out on the table. And then when I go to this day, same thing. Right? Because if I take these two trades, this in terms of our multiple and percentage was great. Good trade, good trade. But now imagine I was wrong on this trade and right on this trade. I would have had a 50% win ratio, right? Because I'm right on this one, but I'm wrong on that. And I would have made $638 and lost 5K on the trade I was wrong on. So I would have still been down about $4,400 off of one trade where my risk was not consistent. And as traders, that's what I see happening with so many people. And once again, I make these mistakes too sometimes. This would have been, once again, a 300 contract trade, went in with 30 contracts by accident. But once again, it's a mistake. I made a mistake, should have been better, should have been more aware, should have been more, more alert and hold myself accountable, right? So that, those are the type of trades that can ultimately hurt you. Same thing here. Let's just say I took this trade, this trade, and this trade. Let's say I was wrong on this trade and I did lose the 5K I anticipated. Even these two trades that I'm right in, giving me about a 66% win ratio, I would have made about, what, 2.7K, but I still would have been red. Like, do you guys get that? See why this imbalance of risk is such a big problem? Right? Same thing here. Right? This is another problem. So my, my risk every day throughout the week was very imbalanced. Right? And the problem with having imbalanced, imbalanced risk is you do not set yourself up for consistency, right? You don't set up yourself for consistency in terms of making money. You don't set up yourself consistency in terms of where you put yourself basically in a position where one trade can ultimately destroy your trading progress. So 
I take this trade out, right? Let's just say 75K. Let's do the math here. 75K minus, let's say we take this trade out, right? Which is 56K, right? So let's just say we take, we give ourselves the 20K profit. If we take this trade out, we're only up 20K for the week, which is great. I don't want to say only, which is great. But now let's say we flipped this trade and this trade was red instead of green. Instead of the 56K green, it was red 26K. You know what happens to my week? It goes negative 6,000. Like, I hope you guys understand that. That right there is a big red flag. And I'm sharing this because, you know, traders see, wow, he made 75K or he made 120,000. And yes, yeah, some weeks are great. Like there's weeks I'll make 30 grand, 40 grand. And those weeks are phenomenal, right? But those are well-structured weeks. But now when I go to a week like this, where let's say I did make 76K, I've exposed myself by having that one trade that could have either made or break my week. Like this was the one trade that was ultimately in control of the whole week when, when I really think about it. And I promise when you guys go through your trades, you'll see you'll have great progress and then you have one trade that destroys your whole week. And you start going, wait, what? Why, why, why am I trading so bad? Because your risk is not consistent. So if you're having this problem, this is something that needs to be worked on. And before anything needs to be worked on, you need to be tracking and understanding your trades. So right here, I have Tradezilla. This is what I'm using to track all my trades. Uh, and, and it's, you know, tracking your trades in terms of breaking things down, looking at your risk parameter is important because you can start understanding, hey, my risk is too inconsistent. Right. This is this is way out of out of line in terms of what I'm risking, what I'm making. And you don't want to be put in a position where one trade can wipe your whole week out or make your whole week because it invalidates all of these trades. I don't want to invalidate. I never want to be put in a position where one trade wipes out my whole week. Right. That's one main thing I want everyone here to take away from this. Very important. Right. So, uh. Skipping this day for now, I'm going to come back to this day. Uh, we go to the 22nd, good trading day, made about 2.5 R, risk 3K, made 7K, risk 3.3K, uh, made about you know 16K, 4.9 R, 17K day. So these were good trading days. Now, these are things I did well, right? In terms of my good trading days, like this was a good trading day. Uh, these were, let, not even this, let's take this out. The, this was another trading day. My risk was pretty consistent, minus this day or this trade, this was kind of a mess up once again. But overall, you know, I'm at 5k risk, you know, 3k, 3.3k, I'm at a I'm at a consistency level of what I'm risking, right? I'm, at, I'm in the same ballpark, right? And as a trader, that's where I want to be, I want to be in the same ballpark of risk of what I'm risking for that week for that day for that month, right? And when I see this inconsistencies, I need to be aware of that. Now going into that inconsistency, and like I said, I have a whole, um, I have a whole video on just that day, just to kind of break it down. If you guys go on my YouTube channel right here, if you haven't subscribed also, all right. But uh, going into this day, right, I'm going to break it down. So I traded FOMC day, and the problem with this day was I don't typically trade on crazy days like this. I'll trade the next day. However, on this day, the what happened is I took one trade. I took three trades, actually, but one trade really, really worked out in my favor. Uh, right here, uh, I bought 382 calls. Uh, on, on, on spy and you know, the trade went, and went, went in my favor. Now the problem was I risked too much because the premiums were adjusting a lot, right? I got in about $2.39. I put a stop loss at one fifty to be very conservative, conservative. I would like to, I would have liked to exit maybe at two, but also with the way premiums were moving, that was not the case. So I was like, Hey, let me be conser and conservative and you know, make sense of this. Now, when I go to my second trade, Right here, I got in uh, puts. I tried to short it at about two dollars and thirty-five cents, and I exited at one fifty-seven. A candle two two minutes later. So the risk for that moment with spy contracts, same day expiration, were way too high. The risk was insane. So it just relatively did not make sense. Like I, in one minute in, I was down twenty-two thousand. Like it was just absurd in, in how quickly the premiums moved. And once this trade happened, I realized like, hey. That's not good trading. That's not the way I want to trade. 
that's not the way I want to look at my trades, right? That's not the way I want to go into my, my, my trading style. Now, when I go through my trade log, when I look at all my setups, opening drive play worked very well on Monday. Took a morning top reversal, great setup. Had two blowing tops back to back going in uh, Thursday and Friday. But now see these three trades, I put no setup. Even though in the moment I, I, I felt like I had a setup and once again, I made money. But I want to categorize it as no setup because that is not to me. To everyone else different and everyone has their own opinion and own focus on how they're trading. That's fine. To me, that is not real good trading. And I focus a lot and you guys are going to see that and people that are new and just watching, you know, my content, I kind of have a, 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 a harder time with this. I focus a lot on what I do wrong. So when I, when I talk about some of my trading, it might be like, oh, well, what, what are you doing right? I focus a lot on what I'm doing wrong so I can improve and get better day in and out, right? And I also focus on what I do well so I can keep doing that. But a lot of my focus goes on to what are the nitty gritty things I do bad on a week to week basis. And I'm sorry to break it to you guys. And I've been tra trading for nine plus years. No matter how long you've been trading and how much money you've made, you will make mistakes. So the same mistake you made year two, you will make in year five, but you just get better at dealing with it. So I've just got gotten better at identifying and dealing with my mistakes and fixing it right off the bat instead of letting it linger for the upcoming days or weeks, right? Now, a few other things about this trading week that I, I, I liked. Let's go into some things I liked. I liked that I, I kept my trades very minimal. Right? I didn't go and over trade 20 different trades, 15 different times. I had two, three, one, one. Like I, I, it was one and done, maybe two trades. This day was kind of the most trades I've taken. Uh, but overall, I've, I was one and done. Same thing with my whole month. Like the most trades I've had was five and four. Right, Those were the two days I've had the most trades. But overall, in terms of stock selection or selection of trades, very happy with how I'm selecting and how I'm kind of very, very focused on just trying to get one or two good setups and executing them opposed to over trading. So very happy with that. Uh, very happy with being, tr you know, just aiming for that one good high quality setup and executing and walking away from that. And like I said, what I'm not happy with is my risk aspect being very, very inconsistent. Now going into this week, what do I plan to do? I, I plan to focus a lot on my risk, making sure it's consistent. Be it is three to five K per trade, be it a six K per trade, but I'm not going to go to a 20 K risk per trade that is either going to make it or break it for me. Like that's something that I'm not going to do. So I need to put that on top of my prior priority list of what I'm not going to do for this week and be very, very contingent on that and be stuck to that. Right. Another thing I liked, I like my R multiples on trades very, very well. My one losing trade, it's harder to kind of gauge my losers because I had one this week. And not to say you're not going to have losers, you're going to have a lot, and you guys are going to see as well. Uh, maintained losers well, tr managed trades extremely well, uh, did, did well in terms of uh, my R, kept two R plus, had a, one trade with five R, another trade with three R, right? another trade with 2.5 R. To me, that's, that's a big win. If I can average 2.5 R, I think that's a great, great win. And that's what I want to continue to do. I want to continue to average two to 2.5 R minimum. Uh, I want to continue to focus on one to two high quality setups, execute and be done. Uh, and I want to continue to have solid game plans of knowing when to play defense, when to be a, uh, play offense. And then what I want to really, really improve on going on to this week is, is my risk. Make sure that my risk is, uh, consistent. The last thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, when to play offense, when to play defense, just real quick. You know, some weeks we're going to have big moves, guys. Some weeks we're going to have flat moves. Some weeks we're going to have crazy movements to the upside, downside, vice versa, right? Just because we had a big week or you had a big week and you made 10K or 20K or you made tons of money, don't go into the next week thinking you're going to do the same thing, right? Don't say last week I made 100. Like, for example, me, I'm, last week I made 125,000 and have a whole recap on that as well. This week I'm, I got to make 100 grand again. No. This week, I don't know, I might walk out making, I might walk out losing money, right? I might walk out not doing well. I, I don't know, but I need to go and take what the market gives me and just be mentally ready and also financially ready because I don't want to burn flat days, right? Or days where I don't think there's opportunity and just destroy them, you know? With that being said, uh, let me know, you know, if you, if you, what, what things you learned from this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, everyone. Comment down below. Let me know what you found value in and what you would like me to talk more about. And I appreciate everyone for watching and tuning in.